Hello, welcome to the ProPresenter 4 Edge Blending module tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the basic concept of edge blending, as well as walk you through steps to set up projectors for edge blending and ultimately use the ProPresenter 4 module, which will provide you the easiest way to do edge blending in the marketplace at the most affordable price. So the first topic that we're going to cover here is what is edge blending. Uh, edge blending has been around for many, many years. Um, typically, and even to this day, it is typically done using high-end uh, processors um, that can cost upwards of fifty or $60,000. And what those processors do is allow you to feather edges of overlap projectors to create one seamless image. So if you, we think of a three projector example, such as what's shown at the bottom here, you would have projector one, projector two, projector three. And what we're gonna do for edge blending, um, instead of lining these up side by side, as you might do with our advanced module, is we're going to overlap them. And that's going to create a seamless image. And what the edge blending actually does is in the overlapping areas here, so seam one and then overlapping seam two, it is going to curve the light for, as it moves from this seam here to that seam. The gamma curve for projector one is going to decrease as the curve for projector two increases, creating a feather, a seam, uh, I'm sorry, a seamless blend by making these feathered edges. So the, as you can see here, the resolution for the horizontal path here is 2000 as opposed to 2400 because we're actually projecting the same data. So projector one, the pixels from here to here are gonna be the same pixels that are here on projector two. That's called data doubling. And data doubling is what allows you to overlap the same area of the projector um, and the blending is what actually changes the light output of those pixels to create a seamless image. So again, you're gonna have projector one, projector two, and projector three. So this is an unblended area. This here is an unblended area. And this here is an unblended area. This area here is the overlap of projector one and projector two. This area here is the overlap of projector two or projector three. It's important to note that ProPresenter, the module, the edge blending module for ProPresenter supports a two or three projector blend. And depending on how much throw distance you have, you can do a, the same screen resolution, same screen dimensions can actually be blended by one or two projectors. When it's only two projectors, you just have the one seam and then adding the third projector introduces the second blending area. This is the, an example, and this is approximately a three by one screen. We're gonna walk you through some steps here um, using this theater example. But as you can see here, this is, this is one projector much wider than even a 16 by nine resolution. And this shows you the benefits of edge blend. And you notice there's no hot spots here. So it's completely seamless all the way across from pixel one to pixel 2000 from our previous example it looks as if it's being projected from one projector, even though it's only being, even though it's actually being projected by three projectors. So that is the difference of, a lot of people ask, well, can I just overlap my projectors? And the answer is yes, you can, but you will have distinctive hotspots here because it will be as if you're double stacking the projectors only in these seamed areas. So it's not gonna be seamless from start to finish. Any kind of edge blending, is what allows you to obtain this look. And just a couple more examples here. So you can see this is you know, smooth light output across the board. You cannot pick up where either where the seam is in this example here. And similarly here, this is that same screen. So how do we do this? The first and perhaps most essential step for to make your life easier in this process is the correct projector setup. So I'm going to walk you through that. This example actually has two projectors. Um, the first thing you want to do is align your left projector. This is just using an internal grid pattern in the projector. 
Almost every modern projector has internal grid patterns. If yours does not have one, you can actually generate one from within ProPresenter. Uh, but the best step is to eliminate any other variables and just line up your grid pattern here. So this is the left projector being aligned during setup. It's very important to eliminate keystoning in this process. And the way you eliminate keystoning is by having the projector lens perfectly square to the front of the projector. It's also to the front of the screen. It's also important to notice uh, here we're actually we have measured the screen. We've measured left, center, and right to make sure the screen is perfectly even. Because what you don't want to have happen is any kind of unevenness is going to result in keystoning. So the, a way to quickly check to see is to look at this square here and to ensure that it's the same size as the squares on the opposite side. If the projectors were keystoned and light was traveling further uh, to hit either the left-hand side here or the right-hand side here, you would see one of these squares bigger because it would increase the throw distance of the projector. And when the throw distance is increased and light is traveling further, uh, say, to this side, these squares would be larger than they were on this side. So step one is to get your first projector perfectly square, perfectly aligned. You want it to perfectly line up here uh, on the perimeter of its projected image with the screen. And once you have done that, uh, you are done. A couple tools of the trade here that I recommend would be a level. Uh, just a carpenter's level works fine to make sure all sides of your projector are level, that they're even. Uh, that will prevent you from having a tilted image. And I do that with my projectors even before I power them on. And I also told you about the tape measure setting here, uh, or tape measure tool here to use to make sure that the screen itself is level. You also want to measure it to the back wall or some sort of fixed point to make sure that this side is not sticking out further from the other. So to make sure it's either um, set up square to the audience or hung square to the audience, depending on if you're doing a ground supported or flown screen setup. Step number two in this scenario is to align your right projector using the exact same methodology that we used. Uh, I usually turn the lens off on my left projector and focus only on the right projector. Again, going through, measuring everything, making sure everything is level, making sure it's square, making sure these squares here are uh, flush across the projected image to make sure that they're even, the same size, that so you don't, don't have any sort of keystoning. Once I've done that and I've got projector one set up and I've got projector two set up, at this point, it's, uh, it's pretty easy from here. This is actually the, hard, the hardest part of the process is getting these projectors set up. You can then turn on both projectors and as you can see, this, this here uh, is actually a non-blended screen because you can see that once I hit the, the overlapping areas, these white squares are brighter than these white squ squares. And that is where the ProPresenter 4 edge blending module comes into play. Because what that is going to do is that is going to data double and blend this area here. So the way that the ProPresenter 4 edge blending module works is with the dual or triple head to go. The dual head to go is for one screen. The, I'm sorry, for two screens, the triple head to go is for a three projector blend. The dual head to go for a two projector blend. The triple head to go for a three projector blend. Many of you are probably familiar with the triple head to go or the dual head to go from our advanced modules. Um, they range in price from about $250 to $350. Our edge blending module is an add-on plugin to ProPresenter 4 and it's a $599 plugin. So the total software cost is right around $1,100, I'm sorry, $1,000. Um, and as I mentioned before, the other tools to make this happen are typically somewhere between ten dollars and $50,000. Um, so this was our attempt to take this, what has previously been a very expensive solution, and get it into the hands of as many people as we can by making it affordable. So the triple head to go will, when combined with the ProPresenter module, will take that blend, and this is just a different grid that we're using for testing here, but you can see it's uniform all the way across. 
So the white line here is just as bright as this white line here. This is blended. This is just coming from projector one. This is an overlap of projector one and projector two. And the end result is a nice seamless, this line here is actually in the graphic, um, but you can see this is a seamless blend that is done in the result of edge blending. So let's go ahead and go into the software and take a look at some of the controls for the edge blending. Opening up my system preferences here, uh, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set your output resolution to a 3x1 or a 2x1 resolution. For the purposes of this, we'll go ahead and do 3x1. So I'm going to make a 2400, actually by 600, output. So that is 800 by 600, a standard 4x3 resolution times 3. And any of you that have used our advanced module are familiar with this. I'm just going to go ahead and up update that here. You're going to see my output has changed. Um, and that is the only step you need to do outside of the module setting. If you come into your multi-screen tab here, after you've installed your Edge Blending module, you're going to see your options here. And here this is giving you a status of what is going on. This has been set for a three screen because I have the triple head set up here. If I want to do a two screen blend, I simply change it to the dual head to go. And it's giving me my resolution that I set and the actual resolution based on the math that we'll get into in the next screen is showing you your actual resolution. If you remember the first graphic I showed you, the actual resolution was 2000. Uh, based on my settings here, it's 1800 by 600. And my blend area is 600 pixels. There's only one blend area, so my total blend is 600. In the case of the triple head to go, where there's, there are two blend areas, it's one blend area at 300 pixels each for a total of 600. So all that that is saying, if you remember this graphic here, is that this area here is 300 pixels, this area here is 300 pixels, so my total blend space is 600 pixels. We'll get back to something that will allow you to see the results of the blend in here. So I'm going to go ahead and configure this. And there's two things that we're going to set up. The first is data doubling. And data doubling, we do the math for you. So in the, the other solutions that are out there on the, in the marketplace, you have to do all of the math and figure out what your starting pixel number is for your blend and exactly how many pixels it's going to overlap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because we're only using the dual and the triple head to go, we have some fixed information that we're able to base our blending off of. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the data doubling, and you'll now see that projector 2 and projector 3 are going to share some information. So what's going to happen in your setup is as you overlap these projectors, uh, that is where the edge blending is then going to come into place. 3 by 1 is the aspect ratio of my screen. What I'd recommend you to do is physically measure the screen surface, horizontal and vertical. The horizontal is going to be entered first. You can enter that in, in, in inches. So this was 300 inches, just enter in your physical measurement for this space for the horizontal surface. Then measure the vertical screen length, and let's just say it's 100 inches. That's going to be a 3 by one screen, which is a pretty standard screen. Uh, you can reduce the fraction to its lowest common denominator, or you can just enter it in as it actually is. Either way, we do the math here as you saw before and make it very easy for you. So the data doubling has been enabled. The edge blending now, as I enable that, you can see as I turn this on and off that certain areas are being blended. So if I look here, the, this is going from light to dark as this is going from light to dark this way. You can change the area that is blended with this blend setting here. So if your projectors, if you're lining it up and you see that it's not a smooth blend, you can actually tweak this blend here. You can tweak the intensity. I'd recommend for both of these starting at 100% and going from there. So you can see this here and the intensity of the blend will give you some controls over that. 
you should be fine at 100% across the board. The gamma setting here will brighten the non-blended area. So if I turn this all the way up here, you'll see this is very light, whereas this is more uniform. If you are using a lot of light color and you find that your blended area is looking brighter than your non-blended area, you can tweak this gamma setting for your non-blended area to make it uniform across the board. And I would find something consistent that you're gonna use as a walk-in look or a logo look um, that you're gonna set that to. An additional setting um, is your black level setting. So if I were showing something like this, there is no, projectors cannot output nothing. They cannot, there is, there is a, bla, even black has some light. So the areas that are showing black in the blended may be a little bit brighter um, because black on black from a projector is actually a brighter shade of black than just black from a single projector. So this area may look more black than this area, or this area may look more, you know, may have more light being output because it's the overlap projectors in this area. So the way that we handle that is by setting a minimum black level setting, and you can finely tune this so that this shade of gray here would match the shade of gray that is being overlap, that is being uh, blended um, in the blended area. So you have some black level adjustments here that will give the ability to, to bring that up. And one thing that I forgot to mention, there are three blend options, cubic, quadratic, and linear. Um, this middle setting is the setting that we have found uh, to be the most user friendly. Um, if you want to get in and play around with either of these other uh, blend algorithms, you're more than welcome to do that. You'll just see that it will slightly change uh, how it is handling the blend. But I'd recommend starting with the middle setting here. I'd recommend zeroing both of these out, and I'd recommend bringing both of these to 100. Um, you have the ability, and what I would also recommend is starting with the test pattern. So uh, you saw the test pattern that I had used. So let me just clear all here. And you can bring up this test pattern that is very similar to this test pattern here, and that's gonna allow you to do any sort of fine tuning. Uh, you'll be able to look here at this blue line, at the yellow circles, make sure everything lines up, make sure that it's uniform uh, from your non-blended area to your blend area. And if anything needs to be tweaked, that's when you can tweak these here to adjust any of your blend settings. And really, this is just a feel thing. This is getting, getting in the mix, uh, getting your projectors one and two lined up, adding your third projector to the right-hand side if you were to be doing a three projector blend. The steps are exactly the same to add that third projector. Um, getting your grid up and then just tweaking these settings to make sure that they look right across the board. Once you have those set, click done. You can clear your test pattern here. Uh, you can get out of the module setup and from there you can go through life as normal in ProPresenter with your seamless image across the screen like I had shown you before. So this concludes the review of the ProPresenter Edge Blending module. Uh, we hope you find it easy to use. We hope it makes a previously unattainable solution attainable to many churches, organizations, and ministries all across the world. Thank you for your continued support of our products and your support and interest in this module.